Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. This is Panos here from Lairwolds. Hope everybody's safe and sound. Hope you can, uh, we can hear us all right. We, today we have Nick with us from our uh, marketing team. Uh, so uh, I hope everybody's online. We see more and more people joining. So we'll start in about a, a minute. Uh, today's uh, presentation. Today we're going to talk about a super exciting topic. It's uh, usually one of the of the areas where people have the most problems with uh, finding and choosing the right topic for their next online course. Uh, so uh, let's uh, wait a few moments until everybody's well settled and uh, we'll start right away. In the meantime, if you like, you can join our chat if you don't see our chat within the LearnWorlds platform, then you can just click the Zoom link so that the Zoom client will open on your computers and you will have full access to the chat box of Zoom. There you can introduce yourself. You can write a few things about who you are and where you're logging in from and we'll be happy to answer any questions live during the uh, during the today's, uh, today's presentation. Also, we'll make sure to follow up with each and every one of you. So if we don't have time to answer all the questions today, you will, uh, it's, it's sure that we will uh, send you a, an email later with some answers and also all the resources. Uh, also to mention that all the resources that we're gonna reference today are available already in the school, in the course that you have signed up for. So you can find there the downloads, the templates, and we will present in a, in a bit along with Nick, how you can use them, how they can help you uh, in your own uh, quest to create your own online course. Uh, so uh, I have a question from, from John. Yes, I'm based in Cyprus. Hope everybody's safe and sound wherever you are. Just let us know where you are. John from Singapore. Ben from Miami, hi there. Becky from UK. Ajay from India, Ralph from Miami, Lina from Tuscan, Italy. Hope everybody is uh, safe wherever you are. These are difficult times and strange. It, it is going to be very strange Christmas. So uh, allow me to start my, uh, my camera feed. Yep, here we are. So let's start talking about today's subject, which is how to find our next profitable course uh, topic. Uh, so let's see first, where who we are this is panos i'm the learner for those of you that don't know me i'm the co-founder and ceo of learnwalls i have a phd in ed tech i've been working in the e-learning space since about 1999 along with my co-founders fannis and george and in 2014 we co-founded learnwalls with the with the goal with the vision of providing to trainers the best possible e-learning platform. When we started our journey, we were super dissatisfied with the state of e-learning, with the kind of platforms that were out there and how far behind they were from the state of the art that we were working in the academia as researchers. So we wanted to bring in the state of the art and provide an actual practical tool that people could use to create and sell the best possible uh, online courses. And this is the journey we're on since 2014. Nick, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, guys. I'm Nick. I'm working here in marketing at LearWorlds. I hope you hear me fine. Uh, so also my experience uh, was as a marketer in academics, actually tertiary institutions, a website about education. So I was in touch with uh, the more traditional education before joining LearWorlds. And I'm here in LearWorlds for the last four years, helping educators uh, sell their courses, giving advice, writing our content, and helping with uh, the webinars and the courses of the academy. Uh, so uh, after after these introductions, let's uh, see what we're going to cover today. We're going to talk a bit about how you can brainstorm about the subjects that uh, you can deal with, the things that you know, and how you can transform them into into an online course. We'll also uh, talk about a few tools and methods that you can use to validate your topic, especially what is the demand around your topic and whether there, there is sufficient demand that would, uh, that would uh, merit creating an online course and trying to sell this online course. We'll, we'll talk a bit about how to create a course outline and we'll give you in fact some templates, ready-made templates that you can use 
again, the course outline and what to put into your online course can be a showstopper for lots of people. So we'll try to cover that. And then we'll talk about, we'll present some research data on popular and trending course topics that we have seen in the past few months, most of them covering the entire 20 uh, 20. And as a bonus, then we'll give you these uh, downloadable re uh, resources we mentioned that we hope will help you kickstart your online course and get you there one step uh, faster. Uh, just also to mention, I would like to mention that this uh, webinar we're doing today comes out of the experience of the Just Launch It Challenge that we did uh, one month uh, uh, ago. It was, it was an amazing experience, more than two and a half thousand course creators and aspiring course creators that entered this four week coaching uh, plan uh, that uh, with the ultimate goal of creating and selling their first or their next online course. And uh, the, we, we packaged some of the, of the most interesting and most pressing questions that people had, especially in the first weeks, in the, in the first uh, steps of their online course. And, and we put them today in this uh, packaged form of this webinar to help more and more people answer these questions, to, uh, transfer to you our experience, hopefully giving some nice examples and some uh, ready-made resources that can help you hit the ground running. We know that this is uh, this uh, uh, this is one of the uh, this is one of the of the of the questions and one of the areas uh, where people uh, usually have problems and uh, and cannot cannot continue. So uh, before going into the actual topic, I would like to anchor this to what's happening in the world around us because online courses have been changed so much in 2020. 2020 has been a catalytic year for everything that has to do with e-learning. And this is important if we want to understand how the landscape changes and how the, the courses that we will create will fit with, with what's happening around us, both in terms of the economy, the market, the education. So we're not creating courses in, in, in the void, out of the blue. Everything that we do matches the, the environment around us. And let's see how this environment shapes uh, the demand for online courses and what we do. I would like to start by our position that the future of learning is online. This is something that we believed in very, very strongly. We knew that this was happening. Uh, but obviously, uh, COVID has been a, a huge catalyst. This, all these terrible things that happened this year, had been uh, has been uh, have have worked as a catalyst for fueling the growth of uh, of online learning. Online learning was a booming market already, was growing by about hundred percent per year. The predictions for 2025 for the entire for the size of the entire e-learning market was for about 325 billion dollars. As, as you can imagine, all these predictions have been surpassed by reality, by, but by what, how businesses and the way we work and the ways we learn have been changed entirely this year by, uh, by COVID. So uh, in this space, there's huge demand. Already there was a huge, a, a, a new creature was on the rise, Edupre the edupreneur, uh, somebody who is uh, active online, uh, create teaching online or either in a self-paced format or in a live format or in a hybrid format and profiting from their knowledge. So how you can package your knowledge in the form of a digital product and sell this online product. And this is where, this is what we do. This is what LearnWorlds has been doing since 2014. Effectively, LearnWorlds is a new learning business in a box which allows you to create your online course, share or sell your course to your own website and manage and grow your audience. This is what you need as an entrepreneur. You need a customer store, a school storefront, somewhere where you can show the knowledge, your digital products, your courses, your memberships, what you have to offer. You need an e-commerce engine that can help you sell those online courses and create all the kinds of uh, business models that you need around your online courses. It can be free courses for that you can use as lead magnets. It can be private courses if you're teaching to a specific audience and obviously courses that you sell under a one-off uh, model or courses that you sell under a membership or a subscription model. And also how you can grow your audience and how you can keep your audience close to you, create a community around your own your online courses. This is what we have been helping people doing since 2014. And especially in 2020, it has been an amazing year. We were blessed to have been able to help 
thousands of new core sellers come online, create an online business or transform their business, their traditional business into an online business and be able to survive and even thrive under these terrible conditions. So who is using Clairwolves and who are these entrepreneurs? We're talking about professional trainers and coaches, consultants, speakers, authors, bloggers, writers, YouTubers, podcasters, celebrities, effectively anyone who has or can create some content and anyone who has or can create an audience. And this is where at the, at the, at the crucifix of these two, uh, where, where they meet content and audience, where you can monetize that in the form of an online course. So obviously uh, here we're talking about horizontal roles like being an author or a blogger Anybody can here can have a specific audience or a specific niche. So there are blogs about specific things, about gaming, about do-it-yourself, about computing, about development, about marketing. So as you can imagine, any kind of topic matches, and we will discuss a bit later with, with some examples, any kind of topic can become an online course. If there is demand for something that you know and the experience shows that any person knows something that somebody else would like to know. So if there's demand about something you know, then you have the, what it takes to create an online course. This is, it, it's as simple as that. So in this space already, we were seeing entrepreneurs, people who were able to just sell a few hundred courses per month, do uh, per, per year, sorry, make a few hundred sales and perhaps uh, earn a few thousand dollars all the way up to people who have managed to create multi-million dollar e-learning businesses just by selling their knowledge. It can be in the forms of webinars or courses or coaching programs or anything that you can imagine, but uh, uh, really the, scale, the scaling potential of an online course is absolutely immense. Effectively, as a trainer, you're no longer constrained by the number of of hours you can teach every day or by the number of people you can reach in your city, in your area, in your country even. Now it's even more, uh, it's e easier than ever in the past to create an online course, an online school and sell it 24 seven to a global audience. This is effectively what COVID has, has done. Uh, the, this COVID crisis, this terrible crisis didn't so much create new changes, but it rapidly accelerated trends that were already there, things that were already happening. And we were seeing that was that was the state of the of the industry one year bef before Alr already online courses were a thriving industry and hundreds upon hundreds of new customers were coming every month trying to sell their online courses. So we were already seeing huge increase in online shopping. E-commerce was growing by about 100% per year already. Huge shift towards virtual experiences and people spending more time online, especially on their mobile devices. Counter-urbanization and decentralization. People in, in many countries becoming nomads and fleeing big cities. The cost of uh, living in the, in the West Coast or, or living in the big cities in Europe and people trying to escape that and be able to work remotely. Working uh, remotely as a remote worker, escaping nine to five, creating side income and being independent, not have to rely on your salary for, but being able to create a side income for you and even create your own personal brand. This is what influencers do. This is what experts do, how to portray yourself as an expert. All these little things were already uh, happening. Uh, the, and even in the, in the, in the field of uh, academia, edu traditional education, the, the, the changes were rapid. Traditional academia was in, the, in decline. Getting a degree from a university didn't mean that you could find a job in many, in many, many cases. In most cases, you had to be reskilled and retrained and, uh, and acquire the specific skills that were designed, but that were requested by, by a company. Big companies like Facebook and Google have their own training programs because they want to workers that know specific things. Consumerization of education, all these executive courses and online courses and lifelong learning, all these things were already happening. And what uh, uh, obviously uh, all this multiplied by a couple of orders of magnitude within 2020 with COVID. And now we are operating in an environment where all users have been educated about online courses. 
millions upon millions of users have consumed online courses this year. So you no longer have to explain what an online course is. When we started back in 2014, 2015, we had to explain to people what an online course is and what are their benefits and how we believed that online courses are the eBooks of 2020. Great, amazing digital products, very engaging, very interactive, where you can package your knowledge and you can sell it to another person. But now, Everybody knows what an online course is. People have uh, flocked again, even to MOOCs like Coursera or Udemy, and, and people started spending lots of quality time online, either spending some quality time, like uh, some, on some subjects like health and fitness and, and cooking and, uh, and do it yourself, or trying to get skilled and reskilled in order to adapt to a rapidly changing market and be able to find their next job. So this is the kind of environment that we are operating in. This is the basis. People now, your consumers, your potential customers, understand what an online course is. <laughs> in, in most likelihood, they have purchased multiple courses even, even before, but especially this year. They know what an online course is. They know what to expect. They're also very demanding. They're ready to purchase. They have done this before and they're looking for skills or for quality time online. And people are used to getting out their credit card, going online and purchasing an online course. So you're already operating in, envir in an environment where e-learning and uh, retail e-learning, the purchasing of online courses is already a fact. So that's a great start to begin with. That's something that wasn't uh, self-evident uh, a few months ago, but now you're, you're ready to, to start at a, at a much uh, better, from a much better position. So the the next the next thing on our plate is uh, on our plate is how to find your next profitable course topic. So I'm passing the ball over to to, to Nick, and I will be here uh, talking with Nick and, and commenting about uh, how to deal with this subject and how to deal our topic. Nick, hello guys, nice to see you here. Panos uh, and will be answering the questions as I will be talking, and I will be answering also some of the Q and A that you if we need later on. So going into the subject for today, it's uh, how to choose your course topic. So uh, let, let me go to the first uh, topic. So we're going to the brainstorming. This is the, the first part uh, where you're trying to think about your topic. You already have an idea. Everyone who is here has already an idea about what they want to teach or has some more vague idea, vague idea about what do you want. So you need to ask your question, uh, yourself a few questions. You, the questions have to be around what you know, what you love doing, and what other people need to know. Uh, you see the presentation, I don't want to read the questions from the presentation. Just in general, have in mind that you have a very good skill, something that everyone is asking you about, something that Everyone is coming either from your office or everyone is calling you from your friends and you messages all the time and asking you how to do this, how to do that. If you have this, it's a first pointer on what's, what your topic should be. If you are very good, uh, let's say at gardening and everyone is asking you about the plants, how you have some beautiful gardens and how I can do it myself, what kind of soil I should use. This is your first pointer to a subject. Then you have to teach something you love. You'll always be better uh, than your best self if you want to focus time and energy on it. So having something you love doing, you love teaching, uh, you, you like spending hours and hours learning yourself and teaching to someone else, that's the best way to go. Again, gardening. If uh, I was asked a question about gardening, it would be bored to talk about it for more than one or two minutes. If you love it about gardening, you can talk one, two, three hours, explain every minute detail about it then this is your subject. This is your point on where to go. And then you have to know that there is a need about it. People are coming to you. You see maybe on Facebook groups, people asking about it. There so such interest. You see a lot of people buzzing around it. Everyone asking, no one finding a decent solution and you are the one giving the solution. So ask yourself these questions. Uh, we'll be sharing the workbook PDF. So these questions and many more will be there. You can download it by visiting the same section after the webinar and download the workbook. So think about this. So moving on to, this, uh, to the next slide. Uh, we're going to talk about 
my favorite way of brainstorming. My favorite way is using sticky notes. So why sticky notes? Because I can arrange them, I can play with them. It's more interactive. It's not just a, a list or your notepad. So you can do it on a list, but personally, I prefer to have uh, sticky notes around. So what you should do, take some time, specific time to brainstorm. Maybe it's five, maybe it's 10 minutes, maybe it's half an hour. It depends on you. Try to think as many topics around your subject as possible and write them down. Write them down in a list on the sticky notes and then try to group them together. Do they fit together? Uh, some ideas that you will get here, we'll talk about it more later. It could be the subtopics of your main subject or it could be just main subject altogether. So do a brainstorm, write as many ideas through them. The next part is read through all of those. If you have 50 ideas, you cannot do 50 courses. You have to choose the best of it, filter out and see what works and what doesn't work for you. So how to validate? Going to the, the next part is that you need to filter out three to five ideas and choose what you, you believe at first it's the best. Um, there is no, no, no easy way to choose the best topics, but you need a few to go deeper into it. You cannot have 50 topics to go through it, but if you have between three or five, you can start the research and see what's going on around. Um, how do you do that? You make a list. Uh, I like Excel. I will do an Excel list and have different columns about how many people are looking into it. How, how many people are searching on Google for it? Are there uh, more courses on gardening? How much are their price? Are, are they priced $5 or $10 for one hour courses? Are they $50? Are they $500 for, but this is a very complete gardening from an expert, a PhD on the topic. It depends a little bit. So you have to see your level of experience, what other people are doing and what other people are pricing. And you can get an idea if there is demand. So competitors doesn't mean that you cannot join. Competitors means that there is demand. So it's a good thing. If you find too many people teaching the same topic, yes, it might be a reason not to go into it because it's too, uh, too many people means too much competition. You need to get out of it. But if you don't find anyone teaching about it, it might not be a profitable topic to go on to. It's very difficult to be the first one and you need to be very good about it and have an audience already. So, you can do it, but check about all of these things. How many people are searching? Well, I'll show on the, uh, on the next part how you can do your own search on Google. And the other part is you should search for communities and niche, uh, and, and niche sites. This could be a Facebook group, uh, Quora questions. This can be a Twitter hashtag that everyone is using, an Instagram hashtag. So people should be asking questions. Look for it, look for forums, look for sites, for communities, for social media and see what people are discussing. If a lot of people are discussing, again, this is a pointer to the right direction, you're on the right path. So uh, I will show you how you can do some Nick, very- if, if I uh, may, yeah. so, sorry to interrupt, if I, yeah. if I may add something here. One of the uh, frequent mistakes we see that first time course creators do is that they create an online school where they mix totally different ideas and topics. They have, the, perhaps they know or they love three different subjects. So at some point they create a generic online school and in there you can find a super specific course about cooking, a super specific course about a, a, a form of diet and another course about digital marketing. And they're trying to sell all three. This is obviously something that is very off-putting to potential customers. They see a, a hodgepodge, a mix of, of different ideas, so they don't really understand what the value is, how this person is expert in one particular topic and, and why they should choose one course or, or over, over the other. So the, and what we see works and what we learn from our customer works is specialization. So if you find your niche, if you find your voice, if you find your audience, as Nick mentioned, by searching in the different fora and Reddit and, and different uh, online communities, you can find thousands upon thousands of online communities in Facebook, Facebook groups or LinkedIn groups, uh, also in, in, uh, in, in sites like Reddit or Quora. There you can measure both 
the size of the particular audience that you are trying to address, their interest, and what are the hot topics around that. So this is what will guide you. If other people are talking about something and they are searching about something and they're passionate about something, then this is your, uh, uh, your way to, to identify a great, a great idea. And when you want to present this solution that you offer, this online course that gives answers, you cannot do that if you add two or three different courses, entirely different courses under one umbrella. As are the communities, as, are, as specific are those niches, so specific, specific should be your online course. So you should create one online school with a, even with a URL, with a custom domain name that is relevant so that people understand that you are all about the subject that they love and there you put your specific content. So not, don't try to be very broad. Obviously you can have uh, you, you can have lots of different things, but they should be under one umbrella. Don't try to cover everything, cover all the things that you love. Everybody, everybody's, uh, all, all personalities have different things and different interests. And we, we love doing multiple things. And even we might love teaching and we might be able to teach different things. But once, if you try to do that under one website, then this, this can be very, very debilitating for your, for your marketing, for your sales. This can be very off-putting for potential customers. So there, you need to be very specific. Talk to your idealized persona, to the, to the, to the specific audience that you are addressing, and give them a very specific solution with your online course. Back to you, Nick. Uh, very quickly, Angela asked about how you combine with bigger uh, bigger companies that might be doing free webinars on the same topic and you, are, you want to offer something paid, go niche. Uh, it's very rare if, there some, if a company is going to very specific niches and offer a free webinar that is always better. Be better. If you go on a specific topic, you can find the, the few people that want those specific topics that you can teach better than the, that this company or they, they're not covering these topics or even better, if you can go, cannot go there, you can offer something more interactive, like a workshop, a masterclass, a hands-on, a coaching type. So something that has more instructor and interaction. Those big companies will never offer that. And this will always be um, more direct, something that people always want to. This is, this, this is correct. And this is uh, something I can give an example from our path something that always people were asking us, how do we compete, compete with larger companies, especially when we're just starting? That's the, that's the uh, being large, it's not always an advantage. Being large means also that you are slow. You cannot easily adapt. You cannot create or recreate your content as fast as you like. So this, your advantage for being an entrepreneur with a thirst and an ambition and the, the drive, is that you can go faster, adapt content, make it super specific. You can be online, you can be around, you can see what people are searching for. So you can adapt faster to the needs of, of the market. This is something that bigger businesses, it always takes months or years for them to adapt to, to the content. So you have to beat them. You have to go faster to the market, present your solutions, and people will know that, okay, this is like a, this is an expert. This is a, a, a pro that knows his or her subject and is adapting and is giving me solutions faster than the big guys. That's always the advantage of being a startup and being an entrepreneur is something like being a startup. You are more agile, you are more nimble, you can adapt faster to what the, the, the market needs and wants and is searching for. So this is what Nick will present now, how you can see what, what where is the pulse of the market and of your audience and how you will be able to measure and use that for creating your content. Yeah. So we have a slide for the keyword planner, but I will be sharing my screen and go on a couple of examples just to show you how it's done. So, uh, so here is Google keyword planner. It's used from AdWords to have paid advertising either Google, YouTube, or other websites using AdSense. So what, but it's a very good tool that Google offers for free. And it's the, well, there are many other free ones like Uber Suggest or the paid ones like Ahrefs and SEMrush. 
Google, uh, Google Keyword Planner will give you the best data for your keywords. So let's say, again, I want to teach, uh, I want to teach gardening or I want to teach, teach some other, other subject. My first thought is to see what people are, are searching for, how difficult it is and how many are searching for. Uh, usually it will give you your local location. So change it and have internationally by deleting the location. Can change the language. For example, if your native language is, in, is Spanish, or you want to search in Spain directly or Brazil or anywhere else you want to be, you can search either globally or locally, and you can choose the language of the people searching. So I will just search for gardening course and online, just so I can see how many people are looking to learn online. So gardening course is near me. This is for offline, of course. 590 people are looking for it. Online gardening classes, 720. There is some, uh, some demand, but it's quite low and it's a high competition, not very expensive keywords. So you can see how much, if you were going to pay for advertising, how much it will cost you. And if competition is high, you might not want to do this course with such low volume. You need to be, sp uh, you need to be charging very high for your courses. Of course, if you go down, you see that there is horticulture courses, might be more specialized, plant nursery courses. So you can also find ideas for more niche topics that might have lower volume, maybe lower competition at the same time. So you can find uh, your niche here. So uh, something as you can look is learn dancing online. A lot of people are moving their fitness and dancing courses online over the past year, and you can see the spike in April. Uh, now it's has stabilized a little bit, but it's already triple since what it was before the pandemic. So how many people are looking? About 3.6 thousand people, or if I have my mouse here, I can see that around 3,000 people are looking to learn dancing online. It's a medium competition keyword, it's pretty cheap. So if I have a course for, let's say 30 or 50, dollars or euros uh, if i pay 60 to, uh, 60 click, uh, 60 cents per click uh, i can bring 100 clicks and it's worth it to have someone buy my course i'll be making money out of it and there is quite a lot of people looking you can even put multiple keywords so something else fitness course online something else we have seen growing now and because I'm going to talk again about that Python course online and you can see all together how how they com uh, how they compare you see Python there is a very high volume and a high competition but because the volume is 18,000 people looking to learn Python that is still place even for you even if it's too cluttered I can tell you it's a very cluttered space but doesn't mean that you cannot teach and there is also Coursera Python that means a lot of people are looking and going to Coursera to learn, which will be a very highly competitive place. But still, if you can teach someone, maybe you want to offer coaching specifically and correct people, give them more feedback, maybe a hundred of those will prefer to come with you instead of going there. Um, that's it. I suggest uh, you use a keyword planner to do part of your research, but in general, Google just just search Google, search in YouTube and searching maybe Udemy. You can see how many people are teaching, how many people are taking those courses and how many views those videos on YouTube have. It's a very good uh, direction to see if your, your course will have in demand. Just to explain here something, Nick, uh, we, we do not suggest that you use paid advertisement for your courses. Yes. That's something that you may choose to do. And in many cases, it can be a, an amazing channel for you and bring you lots of uh, return on your, on your investment. However, do create a Google Ads account, even just for using the keyword, yes. uh, the keyword planner. This is accurate data day by day from Google that shows you, show you, what people are searching online. And it's not just about online courses in general. You can uh, use their long tail keywords. You might find some very, very specific and even strange searches, some very specific online, online searches. People search online when they're trying to solve a problem. And the solution to their online problem, it might be a YouTube video. It might be a, a, an article about what they're trying to search. 
or it might be your online course. So definitely use that. This is, uh, this is something that you're using every day to measure demand around our services and our courses and around our customers' courses. So use that, use your, key, uh, your keywords. Also, another feature of the Keywords Planner is that it will suggest keywords that are close to the ones that you put in there, perhaps some that you didn't think of yourself, but Google will understand and suggest some, some similar, some synonyms and some other searchers. So this will give you extra ideas that can help you identify your topic or even add extra subjects in your topic, add extra learning units, add extra videos or even format the word, the, uh, use the proper keywords. This is, this is a tool that people use also for a search engine optimization. So you can add yeah. more keywords in there and see what people are, are searching for. So this can be a, an amazing tool. And, and these are actual searches that are happening now. So if you go out there and present your courses and work on how to make your courses more presentable and identifiable by, by Google, uh, these are all channels that can that can work for you. And further down the, uh, the line, once you launch your online course and you have a landing page, you may also choose to use Google search. If you see that there is sufficient demand in there and searches, and if you have a budget, you can also experiment with, uh, with the Google uh, search ads. And we do have content and we have done webinars and we can give you also suggestions on how to use that channel as well. But just for doing the research part of, of, of uh, how to choose your online course, this is the best possible tool that you can use today. Yeah, and um, also have in mind that uh, even personally, I don't suggest PPC as the first tool. You have to have a profitable course first and then start with any, any way of paid advertising. It's not worth it, especially if you haven't done paid advertising before. It's better to find someone through email lists, through other free channels like social media and have a few customers first and have some profitability before you even try that. Uh, Dorothy, I will be answering to your question along with the next topic because uh, it's close to validation. So you don't want to miss the boat uh, and launch too late. So you need to validate now and see where you can start getting some audience then. Uh, Panos, we can go to the next slide. Yeah, so the next step after you decide your topic is how to validate. How to validate it means that you have a topic, you have decided, there is enough volume, but there is one more step. You have to decide if it's worth it to do it. Worth it, it means it will be profitable, you make money, people are willing to pay about it. And because Dorothy is asking the private question on whether she should launch the course now or if she is going later to miss the opportunity and miss this, um, uh, this spike in demand, you can validate today and start collecting some people with interest and you can also pre-sell the course. But before I go ahead to, to ahead of myself, uh, we have these methods of validation that are different depending on what stage you are. If you are a new course creator, if you already have a few courses, if you are a creator with audience, a big audience or a small audience, or you, are, you already have an e-learning business and you want to create a new subject or a new topic. So how you, how you going to go to, uh, to do that? If you have some material, offer a free mini course. Think about one tenth of your material or one week or one hour, two hours of your material instead of 10 hours. You don't need to have everything. Have your introduction as a free mini course and offer it to the world. Share it on social media, to your email list, friends, colleagues, anyone who you have their business card. Are they interested? Are they going to sign up to the, to the free mini course? What feedback are you getting from that? And ask them if, you, if, they're, if they're willing to pay for the full course after uh, they join the free mini course. Um, a lot of people joining free courses will not really interact. You might have a 5% or 10% engagement, people coming back to uh, check the course. So if you have 10 or 20 or 30 people, you have three people that are engaged. You can check it. With LearWords, we have very nice reporting. You can go in and check who is engaged. So you can send them a personal message and get some feedback. Uh, another way to validate it is use social media. If you have an audience, if you have an Instagram account with 10,000 followers, ask a question, uh, make a video asking, 
you know, I'm doing these makeup uh, tutorials all the time on Instagram. Would you buy my makeup tutorial course? If the answer, the answer is an astounding yes, go do it. Uh, we have a story of our customers who have done case studies and they had the 30K people on social media and everyone was asking them even before they thought about it to have a course about how to do pickled vegetables. And those people had incredible learnings just by having 30K followers and talking about an alternative lifestyle. And then they launched a course about pickled vegetables. That's a great niche. If, if your audience is looking for it and they're asking all the time how to do it themselves or ask them if they're interested to learn and they will go buy it. Another way is having surveys. If you have an email list and an email list can be 50 people, can be 100 people, create a survey, send to them. And maybe it's two or three questions. Uh, which of these five topics do you like? Uh, how important is this topic to you? Would you pay for it? How much would you pay? $5, $10, $100? How important it is? Get some feedback early on. So these ways are usually for people who have less audience, just asking some people you don't know. Email them a few questions and start building an audience around it if you have any positive feedback. For people who have already some audience, you could have a social following, you can have a bigger email list, offer a free webinar. Uh, or offer a paid webinar. More important, uh, if someone pays even $20 just to see a webinar on gardening, one hour uh, advice or maybe a paid workshop for an hour one time, even, even if it's a small price and people pay you to participate, it's enough people. Enough people could be three, could be five, could be 10. You don't need many, many. But this is a validation of the idea that people are willing to pay and they're willing to pay you and you can get feedback if they like it or not. On the next level is to pre-sell the course. This is if you're a little bit more experienced, uh, you have the topic, uh, you have a platform set up, you have a, most of it prepared, at least an outline, and you know that you can create a course in X amount of time. That could be one month, that could be two months. So you can pre-sell the course, maybe not in full price, on an early bird price. If people are paying for your course before it's ready, so you can develop it. And if a lot of people pay, you can invest some of the money to have post-production, uh, outsourcing some of the work. If few people pay, you can just do it with eBooks, documents, PDFs, small presentations, not very highly edited videos, and you can deliver the final material. If no one pays, you can refund the two, three people that might have bought, and you can say, this project is not going to work, I'm going to the next subject. So do this to validate your idea before moving on. I'm not sure if Panos wants to say anything about it or we go to the course outlines. No, we, we can comment a bit later. So let's progress with the course outlines. Okay. So uh, the next part is that going back to the sticky, sticky notes, I told you that if you organize the sticky notes, it could be subtopics of a main topic. If you have many ideas around the same subject, this can be your subtopics. Again, if I was thinking about gardening all the time, I could be thinking about flowers, trees, the soil, the, the kind of water I need. I might have written a lot of niche ideas. This could be very small topics. I can go back first to the sticky, sticky notes and collect them together in groups and see if I have decided to validate this topic. Can I use five of these ideas as a subtopic? It's a good starting point to make an outline. And to make an outline, to grow the outline and really develop your course very quickly, the first thing you have to decide is you have a topic, but you need to decide the learning objectives and the outcomes. If you decide about what your students should learn, what they should get at the end, for example, I want them to be able to grow their own small garden with five varieties of flowers and bloom until next spring. It's a learning outcome. So you have a path to success and you can build on towards there. Then you can brainstorm the rest of the subtopics. You can fill up the, the missing path. That's why I like the sticky notes. I can move them up and down and fill up the path and think about sticky notes going into a path of success. Um, then you can add what kind of material do you need? Each idea, each subtopic should be connected to a presentation, a PDF, a video, 
a quiz, a different kind of learning activities. It could be an assignment, a challenge you're going to, to give your students. So think about these activities then, and you are creating a very quick outline. And to help you out, we have created 18 course outline templates. We have done a research through our customers and see the most prominent um, uh, trends on how different kinds of courses are being structured. Uh, we're giving you between the first and the third section as a structure, and you can continue with the same way on the next few sections and now and on. So we're giving you the beginning of the course outline every time, and you can build on that to create your own course. You can just copy paste uh, one of the templates and you can see that we suggest a video here or an ebook here or an exercise at this point and then an exam or a certificate. So you can start thinking that you just fill up the titles there and you have an outline. Uh, this again will be downloadable. If you refresh the course later on, go to the section two and find the PDF to download it. Next slide is also a screenshot about the, the course outline. So this is how it looks. And we have 18 of those. And next, we're going to talk about the popular trends and topics. We have done our own research. It's both from our customers and both from industry experts. Uh, we're monitoring and seeing what uh, subjects are very, very, very popular uh, right now. And some of those subjects are uh, especially popular, not just now, it's, uh, we're going to, to talk both about trends through 2020 and the pandemic, but some of these trends are, were happening years before. It's not something that showed up, especially the computer science and programming courses. Uh, those have been a trend for the last five and six years, and they're they are just growing, they're not going down. Uh, that's why the example on the Python, Python is the, the main uh, the main language that uh, is being searched right now for people who want to learn programming. AI, both deep learning and machine learning are very popular subjects for the last couple of years and they are growing in popularity as time goes on. Web development, everyone is going online right now. Everyone is a web developer. JavaScript, again, it's connected with the web development, a more niche topic, but very highly searched. Cloud community, especially people are looking how to do, uh, how to create websites on the Amazon server, which is one of the cheapest right now. So anyone who has skills about cloud community, for example, the Amazon web servers, uh, Microsoft Azure servers, or uh, Google servers, they can teach other people how to do it themselves. Uh, a question here from Nehemia. Uh, we'll be sending the recording tomorrow and we can see if we can share also the presentation so you can have it. Um, going on, uh, a rise, especially after the pandemic, we have seen a rise in professional skills. People are looking for skills to improve their workplace position, get, the, get a promotion, get an improved uh, job. And those are not something that are coming up just now, but we're expecting them to grow a lot in the coming years. So those are data science and data analytics, uh, how you can manage data. Excel, Excel is not a trend from now, it's 20 years in trend. Everyone wants to learn Excel from some, it's, it's so useful for so many jobs that it will never go away. There's so many people teaching Excel and there is space for so many more because so many people are looking about it in all levels from beginners, junior, advanced, how, how to do, Crazy things with Excel is an incredible tool, and a lot of people are looking to learn uh, about it. Statistics, specifically, I have seen search about uh, the R programming language on statistics. This is something that is growing up. Project manager, uh, project management, uh, especially PMI uh, certificates are growing up. Finance and accounting, uh, people want to learn both to improve their skills for finance and accounting because it's also uh, continuous, um, continuous education required uh, profession. Usually in a lot of countries you're required to complete some credits to get your, to keep your license. And uh, also businesses, everyone who runs their own business, the first thing they need to learn is how to manage their finance and their accounting. So those are subjects that have a lot of niches that you can teach. 
people love design uh, design subjects, both Photoshop for their own amusement, but also for work and graphic design. Um, it's trending again for years. It's not something we see right now, but more people want to learn Photoshop as time goes by. So something we see a lot here in LearnWords is wellness and well-being courses. So both the wellness, self-development and the fitness, they are huge topics. So we have given some examples here, but it's so many micro topics. We can only group them together in these categories and we can give some examples, but it could be 10 people teaching one subject and 20 the other. It's so many niche topics uh, that fit together under these, uh, under these categories. So wellness can be mindfulness or mental health. And we're expecting mental health to grow much more in the coming year. And people want to be better. They want to be healthier. They want to have a better understanding on, on themselves, their environment and how to grow. So self-development, anything to do with relationships. It could be fixing your relationship, finding a new one, uh, fixing your relationship with your children, your, your family. So any type of relationship courses and coaching is becoming more and more popular. Psychology courses mostly involve on uh, ourselves and how we affect other people and how we talk with other people are very popular right now. Again, self-development in the category of learning a new skill or improving our health, like cooking and nutrition is growing up the last few years. Now, fitness. Fitness has been something that was trending before, but during the pandemic, it has skyrocketed. Uh, as the example I show you with the dance classes, it has quadruple or, for, or it was five times higher during the first lockdowns. And it has dropped since then, but it has dropped to three, four times the, the level of, uh, no, at least twice the level of it was before, depending on the subject. There are some, some topics that have been double or tripled, and they're here to stay. People are not going to physical class anymore, so they, they need to uh, find a way to express themselves. That could be uh, learning, uh, being more fit, they could exercise at the, their living room, they can do yoga. They can do some dance classes, um, learn a new physical skill or how they can do some physical activity in their area. Business topics, again, there are a lot of niche topics, but we see more topics around persuasion, negotiation, and management. And probably management, especially remote management, will grow much more in the coming years. So last topics, it's uh, around marketing, art, and hobbies. So especially digital parts of marketing will grow a lot. Again, during the, uh, due to the pandemic, a lot of people need to learn how to move from what they were doing before and move into digital methods. And also a lot of people losing their jobs. They see that they have some interest in marketing, especially digital marketing, and they're trying to learn about it or they, they want to self-start their own uh, career through social media, especially new ones like TikTok. So we see a lot of searches on course about general marketing, how to do digital marketing, the basics, etc. We also see a lot of searches about social media on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube marketing. So people are looking to learn how to market on social media and the growing social media or the biggest social media are the ones that they're uh, going on right now. Paid ads, how to do paid ads on Facebook and AdWords is the top topics, but there are more niches about other subjects, uh, about other ways like performance marketing that you can find. I said, this is the difference. Like you can have a cheap course and teaching thousands of people on Facebook marketing, or you can have a very expensive course in a performance marketing uh, that you're teaching 10 people and it's more expensive. You should choose about it. And if, if you have a very highly looked out skills by professionals, advanced courses, I would suggest you go with a niche and the more advanced, as long as you know how to reach out to these people. Uh, SEO, a lot of people are looking to learn how to do SEO. SEO is getting more difficult. For anyone who doesn't know, it's the search engine optimization how, or how to show up on Google. So it's a very difficult topic. It's getting more difficult and more people are learning about it and they want to join this trend and learn how to do SEO. Copywriting, the art of writing uh, for anything, for advertising, for media, for landing pages, 
it's a good skill for everyone to have, especially a course creator, but it's a skill everyone is looking to learn how to do copywriting. So the last part, we see a lot of art and hobbies. Uh, we see a lot of people going back to traditional knitting and sewing, something I did not expect, uh, but it's fun. A, a lot of uh, people, especially when they are locked at their houses, they're going back to very nice hobbies like knitting or drawing, and they want to learn more about it. Uh, something that was trending from before was photography. Always it was a subject that people are, are becoming more self-photographers, especially with the rise of smartphones. Everyone has a smartphone right now, so you can teach photography for hobby or advanced photography for professionals. Ma many people aspire to become photographers. Um, so you have different levels that you can teach and you can have a niche subject like uh, teaching a class on how to do photographs with your iPhone, or you can do photographs with X phone or, the, or uh, an action camera. So you can go in niche or you can go big to the more general audience. Uh, another big category is music. Music uh, depends on the musical instrument that someone wants to learn. The most popular are piano, guitar, and just singing by yourself. Uh, there are more niche uh, musical instruments you can teach. Of course, less people want to, to, to learn about it. Uh, the more gener generic topics is music theory and music production. A lot of people want to become DJs themselves, or they want to learn how to produce their own music because they know how to do music with their own instrument, but they want to take it to the next level. So music production softwares, and if you are a DJ or a music production specialist, and you can teach other people, you can teach other people how to use a software that you're very good. It's the same as Excel. People will want to learn how to use the top software in their industries. Um, okay, I think we're, we finished the popular topics. And now we're going to the predictions. So what we believe that will show up on 2021. And this is our own personal predictions based on the information we have from this year, from all the data we see and what, what we see changing in our environment. And we feel that this will be a trending topic next year. So if anyone is following cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin is going up right now and it has hit, I think the top and going a bit down, but it will stay on a higher price than before. So the interest in cryptocurrencies and blockchain will skyrocket in the first months of 2021. So if you are already building a blockchain course, I will suggest you take it live as soon as possible. People are going to be interested in that right now. And we'll see a rise about it in 2021 and slowly it might become a more popular topic as more governments are regulating it. Very important one is certification courses for professional development. Uh, this is connected with reskilling. And I was watching uh, one webinar from the World Economic Forum uh, the other day. It's a very interesting one if you want to search uh, on it on YouTube about reskilling. Uh, th this goes together. Many people are losing their jobs and they need to find a different job. Learning a, pro a profession, a professional skill is very important. Going from one skill to the next in your, in your job or to a new profession is very important. Uh, we see a lot of pe a lot more people looking to do, train teachers in how to use online tools right now. So education is going live. So people who teach teachers how to go online, and people who teach other people on digital transformation, uh, remote work or remote management, these are the pe people will be looking. Uh, sorry, these are the courses who people are going to look over. Uh, so. Again, I talk about programming. Python programming is going up. Uh, artificial intelligence, data science, cloud comp computing, they are not going to go away. They're going to increase in demand as more jobs are going digitally, as more jobs uh, demand programmers on so automating tasks. So these topics will just grow, not just on, over the next year, over the next years and decade. Maybe the, the language will change, but, um, Artificial intelligence and data science will be something that will stay as a subject and will grow in demand and become more and more advanced. So again, also digital marketing, as people are losing their jobs because of the pandemic, 
they want to change jobs into digital marketing or become digital marketers to start their own business. So these topics are connected. Digital marketing and starting your own business. It's so important for people to learn how to do uh, their own business and their own marketing. These are courses that are going to be growing and become more influential over the next year. Uh, lastly, wellness and personal growth. We see a crisis, both economic coming up, but also of mental health. A lot of people will want to get some kind of coaching or some way to keep their mental health and become healthier and improve themselves, especially with the resolutions so for this year. If you're going to teach a wellness and personal growth course, the time to start selling is today because people will have resolutions to become better, to become more healthier and to grow on over the next year. So these courses will see a boom in uh, the next couple of months and maybe a small, uh, a small drop, but they will continue to be trending and popular as people will be looking to improve their mood, improve their mental health. Um, I see a few questions. Uh, Panos, would you like to add something before we go to the questions? Uh, no, Nick. I was just thanks for the for the great uh, presentation of uh, of topics here. Uh, as you can see, everything can be made an online course, and uh, and uh, that, that's why we suggest you search. You see what you know first. You start from there, but also you have to figure out what people are searching for. And we've seen, especially in 2020, rise of topics around soft topics. Let's say about self-improvement and well-being and how to just spend some quality time online but also there's huge demand and will it will increase to be so around professional skills and how people can be reskilled and retooled for a rapidly changing uh, market millions upon millions of people have become unemployed this year and they will have to hopefully be reintegrated in the job market in the next few months but as you as we've seen the job market has rapidly changed. The, the, there's, it's, it's a new landscape out there. And in many cases, the, job, uh, will, the jobs will not be there. So we will have to create our own jobs and people need professional skills or things that they can do online, uh, tasks that they can perform and, and get paid. So these subjects are always in huge demand and also they can be sold at higher prices. Uh, uh, somebody can spend a few dozen dollars to to for a, for a, an amazing yoga course or another type of fitness, but they will pay a few hundred dollars about uh, for for getting some new skills that can land them their next job, raise promotion, or allow them to create a business and uh, and uh, and live out of that business. So uh, all the topics are are relevant always search what is trending online communities and where people spend their time online um, are great places to see what is trending what is interesting what are the new trends in the, in the market some of the predictions that nick has here we've already seen them uh, some of them are coming from the past and others we see all the new trends especially in digital marketing and uh, and uh, and all the all the new topics that are that are trending just search what is trending for uh, for what is searching in google and what people are are looking for and all these can be valid perfectly valid ideas for creating your next online course there was a question before about whether it might be too late to launch an online school. I can assure you that we are nowhere near peak courses, nowhere near. More and more courses are being created. Uh, we will, hopefully we will never see, we will never see again the extreme conditions of extreme lockdowns where people were uh, locked inside their houses, having nothing to do other than consume Netflix, consume gaming and consume online courses. I can assure you that this is these are some things that we've seen in the in the past lockdowns and in many from many countries we still see uh, that data like this even today people spending hours upon hours in in online courses hopefully this will this will not happen again under these extreme conditions but 
people have been educated about online courses and the majority of, of learning, we will go back to universities and we will go back to schools. Hopefully this is, we are not here to replace traditional schooling and traditional universities, but I can assure you no business that wants to do some training, no business in the next few years will just take, I don't know, a couple hundred employees, put them in a hotel room for five hours of PowerPoint and training. This will never happen again. We will go back into, into rooms together. We will dance. We will have parties. People need to spend time together and, and form communities and even learn together. But doing five hours of PowerPoint will never happen again. All these things will transition online. So you have so many chances and so many topics in finding your niche. It can be targeting directly consumers. So you can be selling B2C or you can be sell selling to small businesses. You can be selling to big businesses who want to train their own employees. There are so many options and so many opportunities. The more courses are created, the more people will go out and think about courses and create more interesting courses and more and more great courses. It's like asking, have we seen enough coffee shops or I don't know, uh, specialty coffee, coffee businesses. You can see new coffee businesses being created every day because people are getting educated and are trying to find the best quality and are, are trying to, to find the next best thing and, and find the next subject that excites them. And your course can be like that. So are we done with cheap online courses and uh, crappy online courses? Yes, I think we are because people have been fed up. They've seen lots of content. They have seen lots of crappy courses. They have been educated about what is possible and how you can create an excellent online course. And LearnWorlds is all about that, about how you can use the best possible tools. And we give you lots of content creating tools like interactive video so that, so that your videos are absolutely exceptional and they're, they're not like nothing that others have seen and, and absolutely unique. So you can be right to demand a top price, a premium price for your online courses. So people are done with cheap online courses and uh, courses that have been haphazardly put together, duct tape, uh, 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 and people try to take advantage of students by selling crappy content. We are, I think we are done with that. People, people now are much more discerning and much more eclectic in what they want to buy, but we are nowhere near peak courses. Everybody that is already online has a, a first mover's advantage. So the, the longer you postpone your course launch, the, the more difficult it will become in the future. That's true in every market. It's also true here, but we are nowhere near peak online courses. So just do it, just launch it. Think about your course topic, get the, the resource that, that we're sharing here today. Even if you have more, and you definitely have more questions about your course, about how to price your course, how long your course should be, and all these different things, then we, we have answers for that as well. And definitely you can find uh, answers uh, uh, in other places, but we, we created with Nick here, the just launch it challenge, which is still accessible. You can just go there and find all the amazing uh, material and all the answers that we are, that we are giving. So uh, uh, take, take the opportunity for the comment with, uh, of Ralph. Uh, one very common uh, reason for people choosing LearWords, I was seeing that the first years was trainers and teachers who were teaching workshops and they wanted to go online. But the reason for going online was various, but mostly for traveling. If you have been teaching workshops, you have been asked to move to different countries, different cities all the time. And one of our, one of our early customers on that, she had a child and she wanted to spend more time with uh, her, ch her child, but she was requested to do workshops on many, many different companies and many different individuals over many cities of Germany. So she decided to start online courses. She started with three courses and she saw that she had to, she, she managed to make enough revenue to stay home, never travel again for the, for the workshops, do both live and asynchronous courses, make a, a decent income, stay at her house, avoid long hours of uh, running. And uh, she grew from three courses and now has, I think, 12 courses teaching. And we have seen many more like this. If you're a trainer teaching around what, different workshops, you you have a you get bored of traveling with airplanes to go to different cities or different countries to teach, and we see this 
now that companies and individuals are educated about on online courses, it will be easier for you to sell live uh, online courses rather than physical workshops. And it's across many industries. Yeah, and it's it's a nice this this is it's a nice reminder, Nick. We yesterday released an update to our Zoom integration, and we uh, we we uh, we uh, released a new Webex integration. We've seen some amazing courses, uh, some amazing online school with zero content. People just connect a Zoom account and they go live and teach. Sometimes people come to us and say, "Oh, we need three months or six months or one year to develop our courses." Why wait so? You can create a decent online course in a, in, a, in a weekend, or if you have the audience, if there are people out there that want to learn, and even you can do it for free, just validate demand, validate that you can do it. Do a webinar, open it up and say, okay, we'll talk 60 minutes about social media marketing or Bitcoin or real estate investment, or we'll just do a yoga session or play some piano. Do it gather some people online, validate that there is demand, validate that you can do it, that you have what it takes, that you are, uh, uh, you, you, are uh, you can stand in front of people, talk, present, uh, present your, your ideas and your knowledge and others can, can profit. And that can be a perfectly valid validation of, of, uh, of uh, an audience and demand around your topic. Uh, so, I think, Nick, we covered a lot today, lots of ground. Thanks, everyone, for staying online. We have, in the course that you have logged in, you can find all the downloadables that Nick has prepared for you. We have their ideas about the topics. We have their, you will also, I will, we will also send you the presentation that we used today and the recording of the webinar. You will find uh, templates of uh, courses that you can use. So everything that we can, uh, th that we have prepared for today, you can go through that topic. We will make sure uh, if we haven't answered any questions, we'll make sure to follow up with, with an email and we're always here to help you uh, with, uh, with your online courses. If you haven't started, the best way I always say is just go to our website, start a free trial, no credit cards required, no strings attached, play around, with our new website builder, you will get a full-blown website with an amazingly looking template in, I don't know, two or three minutes. So your, your website and lack of technical skills is not an excuse anymore. The website, if, if a perfect e-learning, e-commerce enabled website will be waiting for you in a few minutes. So then it's up to you to think about the things that you know, the things that you love, the things that you are passionate about. One of the biggest trends in this year is the passion economy. People who know the stuff, who create stuff, the creators, how to, to, to get, uh, to get the rewarded and, and how they can monetize their passion, their knowledge and their audience. And this is what we are able to do with the form of online courses. So uh, thanks for attending today. Thanks, Nick, for the, uh, for the amazing uh, presentation. Uh, I hope uh, people uh, that was a, a useful uh, one hour and uh, 70 minutes spent here uh, online. Hope to see you inside. Stay safe, everyone. Bye.